started out this year in 2017, and we really believe that God gave us two words really uh, strong on our heart, and those were the words breakthrough and the word thrive. And we've talked a lot about breakthrough, and, and, and really we've only scratched the surface. We really believe God's, uh, that this is a season of breakthrough at, uh, at Crossroads and, and, and in our lives. And, and the, the thing is, I really realize is we've just touched the surface because most of life is really about breakthrough, and so much of the Christian life is about uh, breaking through, through different things. So we're going to be talking about that some more. But, uh, you know, I, th I thought we really haven't talked about Thrive almost at, at all. I mean, we've experienced that, and praise God that God has, this has been an incredibly prosperous year uh, in our church with, uh, with salvations and, and with just people uh, coming to faith in Christ and growing deeper in their, in their faith and loving the Word of God more. It's been an incredible uh, year of, uh, of that. But also, you know, when you think about the, the word Thrive, I would think that every single one of us really, uh, that's a word that we want to experience. Here's the, here's the definition for, for Thrive, to prosper, increase, be fortunate or successful, to grow or develop vigorously, to flourish. And so what's the opposite of that? Listen, listen to these words, to languish, decline, wither, decrease, flounder, shrivel, weaken, be defeated. And if thrives in, uh, behind door number one and the others behind door number two, I don't know about you, I'm taking door number one every single time. So now here's the question is how do you get there? How do you, I mean, what are, what are some of the ways that we, we, can, we can thrive in, in our life? And I'm not just talking uh, materially. I'm talking every way. I mean, really thriving of heart and soul and spirit and mind and materially as, uh, as well. How do we get there? There's several times in the Bible that, that God says, if you do this, you'll, you'll, you'll thrive. And one of those is, is, is the Bible says, uh, do not let this word of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate it on it day and night, being careful to do everything that, that's, uh, that's in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. And that's twice that and in, the, in Psalms 1, it's talking about if we, if we have the Word of God in us and we live according to that Word, we are going to thrive and we're going to be prosperous and successful. But another one I'm going to look at, and this is really from cover to cover in the Bible in one way or the other, either directly or indirectly, uh, said if we do this, we will have a, live a life of, uh, of prosperity. And I don't know about you, but when God says that, I'm going to go, okay, I want to know what that is because I want that in my life because I want what's behind door number one, right? And so here's just one, uh, one of the examples of that and see if you can tell what the quality is. It says, Proverbs eleven twenty five. a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. According to that verse, what is it that's, uh, that's going to be the key to, uh, to prospering in our, in our life, to thriving in our life? According to that verse, one thing that we can do in our life to see that happen is, is to live a life of, of generosity. He says directly, we will be blessed if we, if we are, are, are generous. And talk about uh, blessed. There's the, the person who, who wrote the, the, the bestseller, the, the worldwide bestseller, The, the Blessed Life. Uh, Robert Morris, he said this, he said, uh, outside of decision to give your life to Christ, being generous is the most, is the best and the smartest decision that you and I will ever make in our life because it affects both now and it affects for, forever. And he says this, here's why, he said, great things happen in generous people. We become more and more like God because God is a generous God. And, and, and also the, the joy that happens in us when we give, and we're going to be talking about that in a, in, in a second. And again, the, the great things happen through generous people. Lives are blessed and the world is a better place as we're, as we're, we're generous. And also great things happen to generous people. Uh, it opens up a door of blessing in our life. It's seriously, it's like we open up a door and allow God's blessing to, uh, to, to come in. And listen, look at that verse that we just read again. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. And the word that's translated there for will prosper, it literally means they will be fat. <laughs> okay, and that's not talking that, you know, we'll need to go on a diet. That's talking, you know, that's saying there will be a life of abundance. And what a beautiful picture. They will be fat. There's going to be abundance uh, in there. And the word refreshes, uh, it's it, the Hebrew word. It literally means to water. And water is a symbol of not only refreshing, but it's also a symbol of life. And, and God's saying, if we, are, if we live a life of, of generosity, that, that it's like we're going to be pouring out water and life to other people, but in return, we're going to be receiving uh, life and refreshment as, uh, as well from God. And here's why it's genius to be generous. We're going to take a look at just two examples. And one of it, generosity blesses everyone. 
doesn't it? I love, anybody that knows me, I love win-win situations. I love it when people, when we, when we make a decision or do an action that everybody is blessed because that, the, the, that, it, that it helps both parties. I love that. But really, when you think about it, generosity is a win-win-win situation. You've got the people, obviously the people that receive the, the, whatever that generosity is, whatever the giving is, those people are blessed. But also the, the giver is, uh, is blessed in the joy that they have and also from, from just, again, you open up a, a a, an avenue of blessing. But also, maybe we don't think of this, the heart of God is blessed. Because man, if we ever are more like God in our life, it's when we're generous because we serve a really generous God. And, and, and we just, there's, you wanna touch the heart of God, be generous. And I'm, again, I'm not just talking finances, I'm talking in any way that we, as we're generous people, we bless the heart of God. That's what God, you know as a parent, when you see your child being generous, you're going, that's what I'm talking about right there. That's what I'm talking about. They get life, they get what it's about. Same way with, uh, with God. And first of all, the, uh, the Bible promises this. It says, look at Psalm 112, verse 5. Good will come to those who are generous. Go down four verses. They share freely and give generously to those who need. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. They will have influence and honor. A generous, in Proverbs 22, a generous person will himself or herself be blessed for they share their food with the, with the poor. Look at what happens. I don't know about you, but I want this. Good will come to us. We will be remembered for, forever. Our deeds will be remembered forever. We'll have influence and honor and we will be blessed. I don't know about you. I want to sign up for this. I want to be more generous because this is, this is something that talks about these qualities will profoundly affect our life. Another thing is our life experience confirms it, doesn't it? I mean, I want you to, you know, to, to think about, well, first of all, I watch uh, the, A Christmas Carol just about every year at Christmas time because I need to be reminded of something. I need to be reminded that life is more than just about me and things. I need to be reminded there really are, you know, two ways. I need to be reminded of what I want on my tombstone, right? I want to be reminded of that. And you have the before and after of Ebenezer Scrooge. And, and something, I want you to think about the before of him. I want you to think, what was he like? I mean, obviously he was tight-fisted, he was a miser, and he was also miserable, wasn't he? It's not not a coincidence that the, that the root word for miser and miserable are the exact same thing, right? I mean, and, and how, how, did it, how did other people feel about him? I mean, they were miserable being around him, right? They were miserable there. And again, if this was a real character, how do you think God would feel about us? He's poured out his blessings to this person, and they're just tight like this. But then you think about the other part of Ebenezer Scrooge, the, the after. I want you to think just the joy that, uh, that he showed as he's, as he's blessing Tiny Tim, as he gives the, the food that, uh, that, that Christmas uh, to, uh, to the Cratchit family, as he goes in and just, he's just a different person. It's a life of generosity. And I want you to think of that joy that's always on his face from that time on and the joy that he brings to other people. And if he was a real person, just imagine that the joy that he would bring to, to God as he goes like this instead of, instead of this. And let me ask you this. Do you think that's a real picture of what happens in the life of a person? Or is that just Hollywood? I want you to think about the stingiest person that you know. Don't look at them. Do not look at them. That's not smart right now. <laughs> think about that. Are they a happy person? Are they happy people? And, I want you to th and, and do they make other people around them happy? Are you happy to be around them? And think, think about the most generous people you know. Difference are, I mean, can we see that there really is a joy that comes from that? The happiest people I know are the people that are like this. I'm serious. My whole life, it seems like the happiest people I know are the most generous people I, I, I know. And it brings joy to other people. And, it, and also, and in reality, think about what that does to the heart of, uh, of our Father when, when they act like, like, he, uh, like He acts. And not only does, does life experience show us that, but also our personal experience shows, shows that as well. I want you to think about, you know, think about people who have given in your life, okay? Think about people who have been generous to you in your life. What do you think about them? When you think about those people, what's, what comes up in your, in your heart? 
I mean, I don't know about you, but man, I, I mean, as I was thinking about this and writing this, my mind was flooded by hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who have been generous. And it's weird, my mind remembers every single one of them, it seems like. I mean, this is the, the incredible, my mind went back to when I was five years old and a, and a person in our, that uh, a friend of our family, I remember, took me and bought me $5 worth of Batman playing cards. And I remember that to this day. I remember one time being in line, I was probably six or seven years old, and I was being in line, and my, my mom accidentally didn't give me enough money to, to buy some sucrets uh, for, for my throat. And I'm in line there, and I look down, and I realize I'm like 60 cents short, and a guy just in the, behind me, he goes, here, I got it. I'm, I'm, I'm like six years old. I still remember that. My mind goes back to, to when I was in, in seminary, in college, and I remember just a care package that a, that a girl gave me as I was writing my, my senior paper. I remember when, when I was the first, the first place I was a youth pastor, and, and there was a 75-year-old lady that discovered the fact that, that I was sleeping at, in the church at, uh, on Saturday nights because I didn't have any place to stay, and she said, came up to me and said, from now on, you're staying at my house. And for two years, I stayed with one of the godliest women I've ever met met in my life named Iva May. And I remember just, uh, again, the, the Clarks, there was the, the time that, uh, that was when I was in seminary, the next time is, is every single time we'd, we'd come home and they'd invite us to their home. And for once we had just a home cooked meal and everything and the difference it made. And then I look around in here and I couldn't even, I could spend the rest of the time just talking about, about ways you've blessed my life and the life of other people. I mean, this is the most generous church I know. And you, you, you've blessed my life with, I, I know times when I've been like sick or, or injured a lot and things. <laughs> and I, you know, I mean, the, like the, the meals, the, I don't know, people one time put, took down my Christmas things because I couldn't do that or, and, uh, and took care of my, uh, my, my leaves because I couldn't rake and, and, I, and the, you know, gifts and cards. I mean, I, I'll tell you something, the, uh, somebody can, can tell you, my administrative assistant can tell you, I've kept just about every card I've ever received. And sometimes I'll look back years later and I'll still get a blessing from, uh, from that or an email or something like that. And I could go on and on with, with, with things, just the blessings that you have done. And, and, that, and you know what? It's true, isn't it? That those who bless us, we remember them, like the Bible says, forever. I mean, think about that. We remember those things. There's something. And... Um, and something else there. Did you notice something when I was mentioning that? I didn't just talk about finances. I mean, we can, give, we can be generous in so many ways. We can be generous with our time. We can be generous with our talents. We can be generous with our prayers. We can be generous with our love. I mean, when you, if you're, man, if you're hurting, you don't need a check. You need, just, you need a hug. You need somebody to pray for you. You need somebody just to love up on you and care about you, right? I mean, that's what, that, that's what you need more than that. We can be generous with our ideas. Uh, we can be generous with so many things. And, you know, every, I was thinking about this as, as, we, were, as we were watching the, the morning stuff is, is there's people that every day that we come in here, every Sunday, there's people that are generous with their time and generous with their talents and generous with, that are generous with your kids, with their time and their volunteering, generous with, with shaking your hand as you come through, generous with, with working behind the scenes and even doing the cameras right now and everything. And upstairs, you don't even know, it, but there's volunteers working there and give, generous with their time and things. And here's the thing that, that we may have all that stuff, but, uh, but sometimes we can be like Scrooge with our talent, can't we? That there's, there's people up here, you need to be singing, that you've got a great voice, you need to be playing, you need to be doing things, you need to be, you're incredible with kids and you need to be doing that. You're incredible with youth and you need to be helping with that. You need, you're incredible with something that, 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 that we can be like this with, just like, just like Scrooge with, with not just our finances, but we can be that with our attention, with our love, with whatever. And just all I know is this, all I know when I do this in my life, it never is made me happy one time. And when I've done this, it's never not made me, uh, made me happy. And I want to be more of this in, uh, in my life. And we never know, we never ever know the impact that it, it, the simplest thing of generosity can, can be in, in a person's life. I remember somebody came up to me uh, several months ago and they, they gave me some money and they said this, they said, they said, this is for somebody that just needs help. And so I was, okay, cool. And I mean, that happens every, every once in a while. This happens uh, quite a bit sometimes. And I remember going, uh, going back and handing the money to somebody said, just, just hold this in case we need, you know, somebody's gonna, somebody's gonna need this and we'll, we'll do that. And immediately after I came out of there, I, was, I saw a friend and I said, how are you doing? He said, to be honest, I'm struggling, man. We are struggling. And I said, come on in, the, come on in my office. I said, what's going on? They said, he said, we can't pay our bills. We're just struggling financially. And so I just started smiling, you know, and I started, so I said, hold on one second, just hang on right here. And I went and grabbed that money and handed it to that, that person. And you, I mean, 
transformed that person. Because not only did it pay the bills, what that person needed immediately, what do you think it meant to them? What do you, how much hope do you think it gave them? How much do you think it made, it made them realize, you know what, God's got this, God's got us. And you know, they, they saw them through that time, and not only for physically, but also in mo- Emotionally and spiritually, realizing God's got this. And the person, I don't even know who gave that that time. I don't even know who did that. I forgot. I mean, on Sunday mornings, I forget a lot after the, after the service and, and things. And so I couldn't even go back and thank them and just go, you know, hey, this is what happened. But that's what happens sometimes when, you, you know, when, when that happens. I remember Bobby said, said something a couple years ago. He goes, you know, uh, people, uh, there's probably people that have long forgotten anything they've ever given me or done for me or been generous to me. But, uh, but it's made a difference in my life. I remember there's, a, there's a, a, friend of, uh, a friend of ours that he came up to me one time a couple months ago and he said this. He said um, he was in a, waiting for his, his wife to have a manicure and pedicure and he just felt this calling of God to go up and pay for a person, uh, this lady's getting a, uh, getting a pedicure or manicure, I forget which one it was. And so uh, he went up there and paid without her knowing and then all of a sudden, you know, he watched her face as, as said it's already been taken care of and she burst out crying. And he comes up and he said, what's going on? And she said, my husband left me a few months ago. And she said, I don't have the money, but I just wanted to do something for me. <laughs> and, and she said, she just hugged and said, you know what? I want you to know that God sees you and God cares about you. There was somebody else that, that all, all they did, all they did was pay for a Starbucks coffee for the person behind them and said, God loves you. That's all it was. That's all the person is. That person, they were just going through something in their life and they started going to the church. They came to faith in Jesus Christ. And think of this, we never know this, that somebody came to faith in Jesus because of a stinking cup of coffee. Somebody came, a lady realized that God cared about her and God was gonna see her through and that God hadn't forgotten her because of a $20, $20 pedicure. We never know how God is gonna use just a simple, uh, a simple act of love, a simple act of, uh, of, uh, of mercy. And you know, the thing is too, is generosity begets generosity, doesn't it? Somebody was telling me in the church, somebody was telling me this, and they said they were in a, um, what was it? Uh, oh, Zaxby's, they were in Zaxby's. And they were in line, and they, the person said, uh, just want you to know the, the, uh, your, your thing is already paid for, that the person in front of you uh, paid, for, paid for their meal, your meal. And he said, well, you know what? Let me pay for the meal of the person next, behind me. And the person said, you're the seventh person that's done that in a row. And I thought, you know what? I mean, it's probably, everybody just probably evened out about, you know, fairly, fairly about what they received and what they got. But whoever started that, Think of that, whoever started that, now all of a sudden, seven people at least, they, they, man, that changed their day, didn't it? And seven, seven people all of a sudden went, man, I was generous and that felt good and everything, it it's spontaneously you know, affects life after life when we're, uh, when we're, when we're generous. I don't know why I, was, I didn't have, I was going to say this, but uh, I remember one time being at, at uh, Buffalo Wild Wings and I remember just suddenly the waitress said, your, your thing's already been paid for. And I'm like, wow. And I remember uh, going and just, again, one of those things of God saying, that give, that, give whatever you saved to that, to that waitress and gave, gave that. And again, it was just something that just, it passed on, it passed on, it passed on. I don't know where it went from there, but I know I saw her face and saw how blessed she was and I know how blessed I, I felt. And let me ask you this, how does it make you feel when you, when you give? I mean, how does it make you feel when you give your time and, you, and you, you write a letter of encouragement and you know it made a difference in that life? How many do you feel when you gave some time and, it's, and, it, and it impacted a ministry? How does it feel when you give to a, a worthy cause or give to the church and just know that when you read, when you saw lives like this, that it's being affected and you see there's lives that are, that are, that are being touched? And, um, you know, I, I, I remember one time, again, I was in, I was in line at a grocery store I was in, oh, oh, I'll tell you this, when I, like just doing the, the Operation Christmas Child, the shoe boxes and stuff, I love that feeling. I love going there and I love buying the stuff and I love trapping, patting that and I love putting it back there and it's just, man, it just gives me, even something as simple as that just makes me so happy doing that. Somebody asked, I saw in there and said, would you want me to do that for you? And I said, no, 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 I wanna do that. I wanna do that, I wanna do that because it brings the, the joy there. I remember being in line at, at a, a supermarket right up here and, uh, and, I, and I just started talking to the lady and her daughter and, uh, and back of me and we were having a good old time and suddenly it's my time to, to pay and I reach in and I'm like, I don't have my wallet with me. And I just come from the gym and I said, oh man, hold on, just wait on, wait on her, I'll be right back. And I go fly into my car and I come back and the guy says, what do you think? 
It's already been paid for. And I'm like, you're kidding me. Who did that? And she's the lady that was behind you. So I go running out to, to thank her and she and her daughter had been watching me the whole time through the window. <laughs> and I thought, and they just had, you know, they, I mean, their grin was up to here, right? And I thought first, man, thank, how sweet that it, I saw the, not only the blessing that it did me, but the blessing that it did to, to them. And I thought, man, that lady is amazing because think about the, what she just taught her daughter and the blessing that, they all, that we all experienced because of that, that generosity. I know I've said this before, but I'll never forget a time when I was five years old. Again, I was five years old and I remember it was like yesterday. My family and I, we were, we were vacationing and, and going to Grand Canyon and everything, but we passed by Four Corners area where, where the four states meet, meet and it's, uh, it's Navajo uh, Indian Reservation. And, and so uh, what, I, uh, what we did there is I remember I'm in the back and I'm, I'm, I have all my, my little uh, coloring books and everything. And, and my dad saw this, this little Navajo boy on the, side of the, on the side of the road. And he stopped the car a little ahead of him and he said, he said, son, wouldn't you like to give some of your coloring books to him? And the first thing, I'll be honest, I thought, no, not particularly. <laughs> kind of like exactly the way I have. But suddenly I realized, you know, I realized what dad was doing. I had, a, had several of them and everything. And so I remember going up and I handed him about three or four coloring books and some crayons. And I just remember him grabbing that and I'll never, as long as I live, I'll never forget the look in his eye. And I remember as I go in and went back into my car and I looked around and you know how, you know, in the movie where you look, look in the rear, you know, out the, out the window and I just saw that kid and the joy on his face. And I'll never, I'll never forget that. And here I'm five years old and I still remember just that. There's amazing things that generosity, whatever that is, the joy that it brings us. And it truly is what God said. He said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And uh, here's from the message. You're far happier giving than, than getting. And here's the cool thing is there's a, there's a, a, a write-up in, uh, in the Wall Street Journal of all places, believe it or not. And it was called, it was Elizabeth Svoboda. And it was a little thing called hardwired forgiving. And she said the neuroscientists uh, such as Jordan Grafman and some others are discovering something amazing happens when people are generous. She said that there is this, there's something, a, 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 a gumdrop shaped um, nodule in the middle of our, our brain that gets really, really excited when we're generous, when we give to a worthy cause, when we give to an, or, uh, uh, an, uh, an organization. And said this, how about this? Said that the, that the, uh, the chemical dopamine is released in in our, uh, in our body when we're generous. And dopamine is the same thing you get when you're, uh, that's the chemical that's re released when you're in love or when, you, when you're tasting just having an incredible meal or you're on a roller coaster and just that thrill, that joy, that, ex that excitement. And also oxytocin, the hormone oxytocin is released when, we, uh, when we're generous. Oxytocin is the, uh, is the bonding hormone. That's what, what, what is released in a woman's body when she gives, gives birth to a child to bond her. It's what is released in a man's body during intercourse with his wife to bond him to, to, uh, to, to her. And think of this. Think of what happens here. God is saying, God in, this, in his incredible, in his generosity said, I'm going to reward you when you're generous. I'm going to make it where it is a blessing in your life. I'm going to make it where you are thrilled to do that. I'm going to make it where you, are bond, where you bond to whoever that is that you're, that you're generous with, that there's something that happens in your heart between that. How cool of God to make it where we are rewarded literally physically for, uh, for, for giving Giving, for giving things away, whatever that is. And also, um, but not only is that for today, but generosity, you know, we know that life isn't just about here. Generosity also protects us. I want you to think of a couple of th things. I want you to imagine that there's a, uh, that, that a person comes up to you and says, you know, somebody gave me a quarter million dollars and I have a choice. I have a choice. I can do two things with it. I can either, I can either uh, buy this incredible firework that goes off for 20 seconds and it is absolutely spectacular or I can buy this house with it. And what are you going to say? You're going to say, buy the house, right? I mean, this is 20 seconds, and it may be spectacular, but it's 20 seconds, it's here, there, and it's gone. But this, man, it'll be a blessing for you. It'll be a blessing for your children and your grandchildren. Okay, I want to go back also. Say you have a time machine, and you go back, and you are in, in 19, or 1861 in North Carolina, and, and you meet somebody there, and there's somebody really nice, and they say, you know what? I'm going to invest all my money in Confederate uh, currency. What would you say to that person? 
don't do it. In a few years, it's not going to be worth the paper it's printed on. Or maybe you go to, to New Orleans on, on August the 24th, 2005, and somebody says to you, you know what, a friend of yours says, I'm going to go down to New Orleans, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy, you know, a whole, a whole section in the bottoms there and everything, and I'm going to put my whole life savings in that. What would you say to him? No, no, no. There's going to be this storm called Katrina, and it's going to wipe out, and it's going to ruin everything that you, that you, that you purchased there. And imagine now, go back to this verse that, Je that Jesus said. He said this, with those scenarios in mind, says, do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves can break in and steal. Did you notice he started with a negative command? He said, don't do it. Stop doing it. If you're doing it, stop doing it. And, and, it's, and notice his, his motive. It's not because he's a cosmic party pooper. He'd say, he's basically saying this. He's saying, there's gonna come a time. It may be lost on this earth and there will come a time where you say goodbye to it. And also go back. Imagine there's a timeline here, okay? And there's this line that goes a thousand miles that direction, a thousand miles that direction. Our life, if you were to put that, would be a pin drop right here. And imagine that's thousand miles going out that. That's just the start of eternity. This is our, all of human existence right here. That's the start of eternity. And God's saying, look, 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 it's just, your life is just like a mist. It's like a firework that just goes off. And it may be spectacular for 20 seconds, but man, compared to eternity, it's not a good investment. It's a dumb investment. And so, um, so and then he starts, and then, do, well, let me ask you this. Does that mean God doesn't want us to save? No, God says this, that, that a wise person, that a good person gives a, an inheritance to his children's children. Does that mean that God doesn't want us to invest? Of course not. Proverbs talks about compounding what God has given us. Does that mean God doesn't want to, shouldn't have nice things or, or enjoy the things that God's given us? Not a bit. 1 Timothy 6, 17, God richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. God loves it when we save. God loves it when we enjoy the blessings of life. But he's saying, so what's he saying? He's just saying, don't get caught up in that thing. Remember, there's more life like this than there is like this. Be a channel of blessing and the blessing will come back to you in so many ways. And then he gives a positive command. He says, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and, in and steal. Storing up treasure in heaven is, is, is the good investment. It's never going to be lost. It can never be stolen and it will last for, forever. And notice this. Don't miss this. This jumped out at me. Store up for yourselves isn't that weird? Store up for yourselves things in heaven. This isn't about martyrdom. This isn't about being crazy. This is about, man, I mean, the best investment is whatever we can do for what is eternal, that we're going to receive a, a blessing for that. So here's the, here's the question. How do we store up things in heaven? You, you invest in those things that are eternal. And there's only four things that I'm aware of that are eternal in this world. And these should be the things that we're investing in. The first thing is, in, is God's word is eternal. The, 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 uh, the flowers, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God endures forever. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is going to last forever. In the, the Handel's Messiah, in the Alleluia Chorus, and he shall reign, how long? Forever and ever, right? Two other things that will last forever is God's church. God's local church, God's universal church. It is called, he makes it, he's very serious about the, the local church and the church universal. He calls it his bride. And it's going to be in heaven. All you have to do is read the, the book of Revelation. And then also is people. Every single person you and I see, every, every day of our life, we're going to spend eternity one place or another. And the smartest thing we can do is invest in, uh, in, in those people as well. And here's what the Bible says. I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. And if you give even a cup of cold water to one of the least of my followers, you will surely be rewarded. We can give our time, our talents, our treasures, whatever it is. But I pray as we live, and, and the Bible says this, this was even my devotion last night, that we will be given generously too so that we can be a channel of blessing. That's 2 Corinthians 10, 11, 9, 11. And, uh, and, just, and, and what's saying is God has blessed us for a reason. He's blessed us to be a channel of blessing, not just to go like this. So whatever that is, where in our life can we, you know, just, can we be more of a, of a channel of God's blessing? Because here's what's going to happen. It's going to be a win, win, win. That the per people that we give to, whatever that is, how, whatever love, whatever time, whatever encouragement, whatever, whatever, whatever that we give, they're going to be blessed. We're going to be blessed and we're going to bless the heart of God. And that, y'all, is called a win, win, win. Amen? And if we could bow our head.
God, thank you that, um, that you're a generous, generous God, and we just recognize that everything that we have, everything that we have and ever will have, that you're the one that gave us. Just like we sang, God, it's your, it's your breath in our lungs. Even our, the very breath is on loan from us. So we realize that everything we have is yours. So God, help us to, to be like the Ebenezer after the fact, Lord God. Help us to be, look for ways that we can bless and invest in people and invest in the church and invest in your kingdom and invest in your word, Lord God. Help us to, to, to bank our life and invest in that which is eternal. God, give us ears to, ears to hear and, and eyes to see ways that we can give of our time and our talent and our treasure and everything to make a difference in, your, in lives for your kingdom and for your world, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we, we pray and all God's people said, amen. amen.